the way this build plays out is very very strong um we're just popping all of our stuff petrify when she spawns very very important petrify do a crap ton of damage and her health she just dies now you are forced to do her her second wave you are forced to go through these mechanics which is why we don't get the one shot on her um you are forced to go through these so for all you you uh diablo uh snobs that are like oh you didn't kill her in you know 1.2 seconds i blinked and she didn't die that's so weird um you have to go through these mechanics if you want to finish in Dariel, which is why i chose this one so then we and then she's just dead very easy this build absolutely slaps it's incredibly powerful it does all content it speed runs my speed is absolutely insane i feel like i can run against horses what's up guys we're here welcome back to the channel so <clears throat> today we're finally bringing you a druid build because i spent the last few days finally putting this together we used some of the xp bonus from the mother's blessing event to get the druid <clears throat> excuse me to level 100 we spent 300 million on the amulet i mean we finally got this build together because my community would not let me not play this build this season so i know you guys have probably already seen it but we got to bring it to the channel so this is landslide lightning strike this is by far the strongest and best build for druid this season so i got to give a big shout out to dt in my community and then ace of spades for the build guys so thank you so much really do appreciate it love you guys so let's break down this build we got the gear the skills the paragon and we got a nice little showcase here against andariel so this is gonna be pretty pretty fun so let's break this out <clears throat> before we get into it though let me just say this is a end game build this is not a leveling build this is not something that you want to level with i suggest using like pulverize or like normal landslide or tornado or just general lightning storm just this build in particular is very gear dependent and is required for like pretty much everything so you cannot level with this build but once you get to the end game then you'll be able to uh put this build together because it requires a lot of gear pieces so let's get into it now we are going with claw here claw is great into enhanced claw the only reason that we actually have claw on the bar is because we want to be able to swap back and forth into a werewolf because as you know druids have now shifted towards this whole shape shifting kind of meta since last season so now it's very very hard to play druid and not be able to get the big huge damage bonuses and huge bonuses from your passive skills from shape shifting you almost have to do it exclusively so there's not really a i stay in werewolf or i stay in werebear because you're sacrificing so much damage by not shape shifting so with that said we got claw this is going to shape shift us back into a werewolf if we need spirit however you shouldn't need spirit in this build at all <clears throat> next <clears throat> excuse me guys sorry next we got lightning storm here up into raging lightning storm so it gains an additional lightning strike and we put all of our points in here we max this out this thing is insane however this is not on the bar because of some of our gear pieces and then some of our key passives like nature's fury casting an earth skill has a chance to trigger a free storm skill of the same category so we only have one point or five points into landslide here excuse me one point into landslide into enhanced landslide because we are going to be spamming landslide which will auto cast lightning storm okay let me say that again we're going to spam lightning slide or lightning slide landslide which will spam lightning storm on top of other ones in here like tornado for example now if you really wanted to you could do this for the terror bones you don't really need it raging landslide uh when you strike an immobilizer stun enemy with landslide it performs an additional pillar you could put a point in this if you really really wanted to however you don't need it um because landslide isn't doing our damage it's really lightning strike tornado and uh just some of the other um skills that we're actually casting okay we have seven points into the gaiet here and that is from our amulet this is free this allows us just to move super super fast uh down into defensive we're taking earth and bulwark with enhanced to make us unstoppable this is also a skill we will never manually cast okay we have 
cyclone armor here because in our chest piece we have ranks to to defensive skills otherwise what you can do is you can take one point out of crushing earth and put it in here if you don't have defensive plus the defensive skills on your chest piece um we are spamming cyclone armor which will auto cast earth and bulwark so we should never have to manually cast this ever however sometimes if you feel like you do then go ahead and do it in a tight spot otherwise you should only be spamming cyclone armor next we got blood howl for the increased attack speed as well as the cooldown reduction of it very very strong here so we can spam one point in ancestral fortitude for resistances and three into vigilance 21 percent damage reduction after using the defensive skill very very strong we got nature's reach here for increased damage to distant enemies and then you double this when they're cc'd so basically slow stun immobilize or knock back super powerful then we're going to come down to wrath skills we got three into elemental exposure your storm skills have a chance to make enemies vulnerable this is very important then we go into three into mending while in wear bear form we we receive additional healing and increase max life the additional healing is nice but the max life is where where we really benefit from next we got crushing earth so we deal increase uh, damage to slowed stun knockback enemies this is really nice <clears throat> we got critical strikes with earth skills fortify you um if you really wanted to if you wanted to sacrifice this you could do safeguard like that if you really want it doesn't matter stone guard when you're fortified you do increased damage very very strong then we're going to come down and we're taking defensive posture increase the amount of fortify and the damage reduction super important here then we got petrify into supreme so we get the cooldown we get the spirit we do a, a huge amount of increased critical strike chance and damage very very strong we max out defiance here for even more damage especially against elites and bosses and then three into natural disaster for the increased vulnerability and then the increased stun immobilizer and knock damage from our storm skills then we are going to take quick shift this is very important this is where our shape shifting comes in so when you shape shift into a new form you deal increased um damage up to eight seconds for 40 percent multiplicative this should pretty much always happen because when we spam <clears throat> cyclone armor we're going to go into human form then when we spam bloody howl we're going to go into werewolf and then when we spam uh landslide we're going to go into werebear so this will always be active no matter what then we got heightened senses again when shape shifting we do increased damage reduction werewolf gives us movement speed and bonuses are double while both are active so this should always be on and then of course our key passive here triggers the additional so if we cast <clears throat> so we come out and we cast uh cyclone armor you should see um earth and bulwark get cast so this will this will end up getting cast here when we're spamming same thing when we cast landslide here let me just go and proc this so when we cast landslide you see lightning storm just comes down super free again see the bar it recasted earth and bulwark so we should never have to manually cast this for our boons dear boon we're taking wariness for damage reduction uh, for Eagle, we are taking swooping attacks for attack speed and avian wrath for crit strike damage. Very important. Then your wolf one, this is the most important boon you need on the build. And that is dealing damage has up to 15% chance to restore the 30 spirit. Very important. Then snake, we're doing a uh, calm before the storm. Nature magic skills have 10% chance to reduce the cooldown of our ultimate skill, which in this case is petrify. Um, now let's go into the gear pieces here we got one option to swap out or a couple options actually so there is a few things that you can swap out of this so this build is very gear dependent so starting off we got vastly's prayer this is very important because earth skills are now wear bear and they fortify us so this is not only how we stay healthy but when we cast landslide we shape shift into a bear so that helps with our shape shifting next symbiotic in the chest piece one nature's fury key passive triggers a free skill your non-ultimate cooldowns of the opposite type are reduced, which is why we're going to end up being able to spam these like crazy. So very important here. You want to get total armor and chance to freeze on here just to kind of um, help hit your armor cap. Next, unsung wraps. This is very important. You have to have these. I know I got some bad ones right now on the rolls. However, the power is very good. Um, lightning Storm gains additional strike each time it grows. And then the crit strikes cause lightning to strike twice with increased damage. So this is how we just absolutely blast next we got to Balt's will very important here this is one of the main ways that we are able to maintain our spirit because 
Whenever we become unstoppable, we gain this. So when we cast Cyclone Armor, it'll free cast Earth and Bulwark, which Earth and Bulwark makes us unstoppable, which will recharge our spirit. And then remember, on the lucky hit from our boon, with Energize, we'll get 30 more spirit. So in theory, as long as you're hitting stuff, and as long as you're able to spam Cyclone Armor, which will auto cast Earth and Bulwark, you should never run out of spirit. Okay, there's going to be sometimes you do because you don't have anything to hit or whatever the case is, then just use your basic attack, but you should never run out of spirit here. Next, Wild Heart Hunger. Okay, shape-shifting attack speed, the heightened senses, but when you shape-shift, you gain Wild Heart for five seconds, increases our damage, stacking every two seconds up to 50% multiplicative, which is insane. Okay, insane. Next, we got a Dagger. Okay, Dagger, we're rocking Retaliation. Our core skills deal increased damage based on the amount of Fortify. We should be maximum Fortified all the time. We got 35,000 life, so we're going to have 35,000 um, Fortify, which is going to be a lot of damage. Uh, now, before we go over to the rest of the gear, this is one weapon slot that you can swap out. So you can do Doombringer here, which is perfectly fine. Our life goes up. Armor goes up, we get some more damage reduction, and this really helps us heal. And then on the lucky hit, we can do some more damage. Doombringer is very, very good. I definitely suggest this for higher level content. So doing the bosses, doing T8s or T7s in the Infernal Horde, stuff like that. Um, this will also help you stay alive. This is very strong. You don't actually need retaliation here. However, if you want, you can just use a regular dagger and it's perfectly fine. You want to get damage to crowd control on here. Very important. And then chance to landslide to be cast twice. Also very important. Um, the reason we want the crowd control and we want the damage to distant enemies. We'll talk about that when we get to the Paragon board. So this is a fine swap. You can use this. It does not matter if you have Doombringer. Otherwise, you can use a regular dagger. On our offhand, we're doing Aftershock, Landslides, Pillars, uh, each strike an additional time, dealing bonus damage, which is awesome. We want damage to distant enemies here, very important, and then chance for Landslide to be cast twice. Uh, then we got Ring of Starless Skies, which is very important in this variation of the build, which is going to allow us to do increased damage and reduce the spending, which will also allow us to be able to spam that spirit. And then we have Earthbreaker, this is required for the build, okay? Um, cast of landslide leave behind tectonic spikes spawning a landslide pillar within the tectonic spikes has a chance to do two instead very very strong here this is required next in our amulet we're doing uh i don't even have the right power on here actually let me go back while we're in here just to be just to be sure the amulet is going to be the hardest thing for you to get in this build it's going to be the hardest thing okay we have to put on nature's fury here um, which is very important for the build. Let me go do this real quick. Boom. I can't believe I didn't have that on. Nature's Fury. Where Where is it? Uh, nature. Not nature. Uh, Nate. It should be balance. Yeah, natural balance. Casting a storm skill grants earth skills increased critical strike damage. Casting an earth skill gives increased critical strike chance for your uh, lightning skills. So we want this, okay? Now, the hardest part on here is you want in Venom. And you want quick shift on this amulet. Very important. The third one can be whatever because getting a third actual bonus to skills is very hard to get. So I opted for move speed. It's a minimum roll, but it is what it is. Also very important. Damage to crowd control is very important here. And then the you got the Gaia, which is the bonus to our speed. Now, um, a gear piece swap that you can do here is if you don't have Starless... You can do the Melonic Ring, okay? This is perfectly fine, and it's a very strong variation of the build. It works exactly the same if you swap this out. So if you do the Melonic Ring, okay, while Cataclysm is active, you gain unlimited spirit and deal increased damage, okay? So this is where if you have this ring, which is a new one this season, you're going to be able to just have unlimited spirit and do a crazy amount of damage. Um, Cataclysm should always be up. So if you are opting for this option because you don't have Starless, then what you need to do in the skill Paragon is you just basically swap out Petrify for Cataclysm and Bob's your uncle, you're done. That's all you have to do. Both variations are perfectly fine. I like this one with Starless. I haven't really done a whole lot with the Melonic Ring. Um, 
this oh my god 600 item power what are these things there we go 925 um god these things are terrible uh wrong one ga plus the landslide which is fantastic but yeah so you can do this option it works perfectly fine no big deal all right now into the paragon board before we go fight and dariel and let's talk about a few things here so we're only rocking five glyphs we got earth and sky for increased damage okay we got fulminate for increased damage lightning damage to both healthy and injured we got keeper for us and our companions deal increased non-physical which is going to be our elemental damage then we got spirit for crits to give us increased damage and then we have werebear for damage reduction in this form which is very important now in this build we're taking a lot of legendary nodes we got heightened malice because we are poisoning everything to deal increased damage okay we are also taking survival instincts while in werebear form we deal increased damage uh next this is a very important one earth and devastation our earth skills deal 10 percent multiplicative increased crit of our damage versus crowd control enemies which is why on our build we have increased crowd control enemies increased crowd control enemies however if you do swap this to doombringer which is perfectly okay your this should go down and that is perfectly fine you're still going to do a lot of damage however i opted i wanted mine to be completely maxed next we got um constricting tendrils on a lucky hit this is where we can poison very very important um next we have uh ancestral guidance for even more damage for five seconds should be very easy to accomplish and then the last and most important one is thunderstruck which is again 20 percent. so we max this at 60 of our damage versus close and damage versus distant which is why on here on our offhand we have damage versus distance and we have damage versus uh or excuse me damage versus distance on one piece put this on the offhand now the reason that we're not doing damage to close is because the damage to distance is much bigger you see here where it says damage versus close is up to 55 percent and damage versus distance is up to 178 percent so if you get damage versus distance you'll be able to max that in the paragon board much easier i only critted on it once and then upgraded and then this thing is at, is just absolutely maxed very easy to accomplish but i wanted to have max damage there which is why i did that but again doombringer is perfectly fine guys you lose a little bit of damage there but you make up for it it's perfectly fine like the video comment down below let's get this to 100 likes or more let's try to set a record and get to 200 likes that would be fantastic all right comment down below let me know what you guys think of this build let me know what kind of other variations i can do with this because i really enjoy this build and i think just even having this swap here is very cool um, to really mix it up so i like that there's a lot of variation with this build um but let me know down in the comments below guys don't forget to subscribe if you're new and as always stay gaming and i'll see you guys in the next one peace